Many people don't know that, but Node.js has an out-of-the-box application layer clustering capabilities, which can do load balancing as well at the same time. It's especially suitable for smaller projects and developers who don't want their hands to get dirty with Docker and container orchestration. So if you're interested, this is how it works. All right, so before we dive deep into all of that interesting code related to clustering, I would, as always, suggest going to the Blackboard to better understand the problem that we're trying to solve, right? So as you see, modern operating systems usually run upon different cores and cores are either coming from one CPU or more. And in our case, we have three different cores, but usually you would have four or more cores, right? And whenever you start your Node.js application, which is in green, it gets assigned to a program or a process within this core. And the process is in blue, as you see here. So let's say you have a client and the client makes requests. So we have one or more requests. Usually, let's say we have 10 or 100 concurrent requests because your app is very popular. And where are these requests are going to go? Obviously, they're going to go to your Node.js server, which is running on one of your cores on your machine. But since we have more cores, why don't we utilize them as well? Let's say we now have tens of thousands requests. Now your Node.js application is obviously going to crash. Well, it's going to process some of these requests, but since the bandwidth of your network is limited, it's also going to drop some of those requests. So modern architectures usually consist of more replicas of this node. So let's remove that arrow or move it back. And let's say we spawn different Node.js servers on different cores as well, so because we can do that. Let's spawn it here. Let's spawn another one here. And now we have a architecture called a cluster. So I'm going to put a cluster here and let's say it's gonna be red. So whatever you see within this red box is basically a cluster. And a cluster is a collection of nodes somehow interconnected that are responsible for handling user requests. So now whenever your requests are incoming to your one of your servers, what we usually would have is first of all, an API gateway, right? Or let's say, let's call it a server. And because it looks like a server to the people outside for your customers. And then we are going to have a primary server or a primary, let's say instance. So we're gonna call it primary. And let's move one of our node instances here because it is indeed a node instance, right? So it's running here. And now all of the requests that are coming from your server into your ecosystem, they're going to first hit the primary one. And then the primary one is going to act like a bal load balancer in a way, but also as a cluster manager. So it's going to see which server, Node.js server, can I redirect this request to. And it's going to do that in an algorithm called round the robin, right? So it's going to move one of the requests here, the second one is going to go here, and the third one is going to go here. Now, these three node instances don't necessarily need to know about each other because they're running on different cores, right? But you can, of course, share the storage. You can, of course, try to share the memory and as well. But let's say all, all of these um, requests that are incoming don't need to be tightly coupled so they can be processed by different nodes. And this architecture is called clustering. And now let's go back to the code and see how the application would work without a cluster and with a cluster. First, let's start without a cluster. As you can see, I have a basic express app and let's take a look at the package.json. So what I have here is main index.js and it's type module. This is very important because otherwise, if you don't declare it as a module, we're not going to be able to import packages like this without a webpack, right? So we also have express obviously, and we also have some dev dependencies that we're going to use later for our stress testing. So I have load test and PM2. I'm going to talk about them a bit later. But now let's close the sidebar, this. And what do we have here? So we have an express application running on port 3000 and very basic. So listening on port here, 
And we also want to console log out the process ID that we're running on. It's going to be useful. And here we have our first route called heavy. So what heavy does, it basically loops through the I 50 million times. It's not too much for a modern computer or modern process, I would say. No JS process, but still we are able to do some, get some useful insights from the benchmark later. So, and then we're going to re return the total number of the loops as soon as the process is finished. So I would start the program like this, index.js. Now, as you can see, the application is running on process ID of 10.970, all right? So what can we see here? I would, of course, start our benchmark already before we turn our index.js into a cluster. So I would say npx, and I'm using npx before because you can run packages within your node modules without having to explicitly install them globally. So load test, and I'm gonna say a number of requests in total is gonna be 1200. And I'm going to say the concurrent number of concurrent requests is gonna be 400. And I need to specify the URL of this route. So I'm gonna say, and we're gonna hit the heavy route. So we're hitting the heavy route. And this is going to take a while, but I'm gonna pause the video. All right, so we have our first results. And what we see, first of all, is that we have a lot of errors. Almost half of the requests were dropped. I think it's probably because I'm running uh, recording software and video capturing software. So my computer is especially slow at the moment. But as you can see, the mean latency for us was almost three seconds, right? So three seconds is not that good. So what we're going to do now is use clustering for us. So I'm going to cancel this process and I'm going to stop the server for now. So everything stopped. Let's go to our other JavaScript file called primary. And what primary is basically this here, primary with an own instance. So what we're doing here is first we're including the cluster module from Node.js. And as you can see, cluster of Node.js processes can be used to run multiple instances of Node.js that can distribute workloads among their application threads. So we're going to distribute the workload like here, as I explained before. But also it says that when process isolation is not needed, use the worker threads module instead. So if you don't want to isolate your node server service for your each of your core, you can of course use worker threads. And I have a video on worker threads and in another separate short video, I'm going to explain the exact difference between them. But if you want to learn more about worker threads, because they're very useful and interesting, please go ahead and check it. So we also import uh, OS because this is how we're going to reference our cluster. And we need some kind of a way to direct to, to point to our index HTML or index JS rather. So we're going to create a new variable, their name, and using their name and file URL to path and import meta URL. So the current URL is going to be referenced later. So what we also have is a CPU count. Currently I have eight CPUs, but might be different for every user and for you too. And we're also going to console log out the total number of CPUs. So you're going to see that. And of course the primary process ID. So it's going to be different from these process IDs, right? So this is work. This works as a gateway, as a load balance. And then we use this cluster, which is here. So we're going to use cluster and set up primary. So primary JS, as you can see, is the primary. And we are going to execute one of the index.js files and are going to replicate it. So as you can see, their name plus index.js. And here we are having another for loop, but this for loop is responsible for spawning those node servers, all right? So we're going to loop four times because, or rather eight times because I have eight cores and we're going to call cluster.fork to initialize them or to start them, okay? And then as soon as we have an exit event because exit event fires whenever an instance is down because it either crashed like you saw here 
in my benchmark because you, you got, we got a lot of errors. It either crashed, and I'm pretty sure some of the requests actually crashed the server. We're going to start another one. So we're going to start another instance as soon as one of them crashes. And this way, we're making sure that we always have eight instances because we have eight cores. Now, please make sure that you see the difference here. Uh, we are doing load balancing, all right? We are spawning different instances and are going to kind of direct every request, but we're not doing automatic scaling. So auto scaling is not what is, is done here because auto scaling usually works the way that we initially spawn two, uh, let's say, node servers. And whenever the load balancer notices that, oh, we have more requests that actually could be used by other new instances, we're going to automatically create and whenever the demand is low, we're going to turn them off. But here we always have eight cores or eight instances and we're going to recreate them if they die. Okay, now call primary.js and not index.js anymore, primary.js. And now we have a different output. So we have our primary process ID, which is this. And for every worker, so index.js are is now acts as a worker, we have a different process ID. So this, this, as you can see, all of them are different and I have eight of them in total, but all of them are listening on the same port because that's what they do. They don't know about each other, but they're acting as one, as they're acting the same way. So why not conduct our load test again? I'm going to clear this and I'm going to run the same thing again. And let's see what happens now. Now we can see the results. So first of all, please notice that we don't have any errors because we were able to handle all of the requests since we have eight nodes, that's a lot. And the second thing is that it was much faster, just took us 19 seconds and we have a lower latency. So previously I said it was three seconds, actually it was 30 seconds, so I was wrong and now it's six times faster. So the, the mean of the request that handled 50 uh, iterations, like here, took us just five seconds, almost five seconds, 420 milliseconds. So this is really cool. Another thing that I wanted to show you really quick is that you can actually achieve the same thing, the same node spawning that we do with, primer, with calling primary JS completely with a third party package called PM2. PM2 start index.js. So as you can see, I'm not running my primary.js anymore, but I'm saying index.js and it automatically spawns eight instances for me. And it says mode cluster because it does actually run on the cluster mode that we saw previously. So here, and it shows us the CPU utilization for all of them. And in case if we want to do our benchmark again, we're going to notice that this output is the same if we manually run this primary.js. So just to kind of show you that, I will fast forward it. And as you can see again, five seconds, 602 milliseconds, all right? So this is how you use clustering within Node.js. Hey there, it's me again. I just wanted to quickly say thank you very much for watching this video and smashing the like button. And if you wanna stay up to date with such cool topics, Make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss whenever a new video is out. And I'm gonna see you in the next one.